Hey, what's up guys? As you can see, the parts are starting to pile up. So let's see what else we're gonna install on the 70 Chevelle today. And it looks like we are gonna go with this Wagner Serpentine Accessory Belt Case. So let's get it. So before we even get started, here's a list of stuff that you will need to do this install. All right, so in order to stick with the formula of YouTube and to make millions of dollars, we're gonna do this unboxing video. But you know what? I kind of find unboxing videos boring, so we're gonna go ahead and fast forward to this part right here. All right, so let's see what's in the box. We got a bunch of wrapping paper, and then we got the alternator. We got the ATI dampener, a packing list. This is like the AC compressor, a big brown box, and a big white box, along with the instructions. All right, so the first thing we're gonna open up is this big brown box. Now you wanna make sure every box, um, when you open it up, it has a pulley, maybe some other parts to it, and it has a bolt kit. So make sure you keep all that together. This will make it a lot easier for you to put stuff together once you start assembling the kit. All right, in the white box, we have the rest of the kit, which has more pulleys, belts, and the water pump. So let's go ahead and fast forward this because I know you guys ain't eight years old and they didn't come here for no unboxing video. And the small uh, brown box has an AC compressor. This is what it looks like in case you guys never seen one before. So we went with the upgraded alternator that puts out more amps. This one doesn't have a pulley because there's a pulley in the kit for it. And that noise in the background is a pressure washer because my wife was washing her Hellcat. So uh, you're going to probably hear that throughout the whole video. So if you already have a harmonic balancer like we do, you're going to have to remove that. So that way you can attach the kit to um, this harmonic balancer, the ATI harmonic balancer, which is a better harmonic balancer. Now this piece here is a two-piece harmonic balancer. So we'll have to put it together with a Torx hardware that it comes with. So I find it easier to lay out everything like this and put the hardware next to it. So that way it's easier to find once you get to that step when you got to install it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this where the starter goes to hold the flex plate. That way I can break the harmonic bouncer loose with a 24 millimeter socket and a long ratchet. And if you hear me breathing hard, it's because the microphone picks up everything and because I'm out of shape. So once you break that bolt loose, you should be able to take it out by hand. And then you'll need a harmonic bouncer removal tool for LS engines, just like this one right here. Make sure you don't use a generic three jaw puller because you'll damage the harmonic bouncer. So as you're pulling the harmonic bouncer off, you wanna grab it with the left hand so that way it doesn't drop to the floor. So now we're gonna check the crank to see if it has a keyway so we can install a key for the harmonic bouncer to the crankshaft. Pay special attention to the offset hole on the flange and on the outer shell as these two need to line up. So now we're gonna use a Torx Plus 40 socket to run this hub in and we're gonna put in all six bolts that go onto the hub. So we're just gonna put this together just to hold the hub together until we put it onto the engine. And then once we get it set onto the engine, we're gonna pull the bolts out, put some blue 242 Loctite, and then put it back in and torque them down to spec. The kit comes with this pulley that attaches to the harmonic balancer and gets bolted down with three bolts. The Allen bolts that come with the kit are a little bit shorter than the ones that come with the harmonic balancer. So we're gonna use the ones for the harmonic balancer instead. Next, we're gonna install our key to the crankshaft and then we're gonna install our harmonic balancer and line it up to the key. If your crankshaft doesn't have a provision for the key, you can still use this harmonic balancer. However, this little slot where the harmonic balancer has for the key, you're gonna put RTV in it to prevent leaks. So next, we're gonna use this piece here to install the harmonic balancer. I don't recommend using the old bolt because it might only catch a couple of threads and you don't wanna put a lot of stress on that. But with this long bolt, it'll catch a lot of threads and you're able to press it in. So with the harmonic balancer installed, I'm going to remove those six 40 Torx Plus bolts. And then we're going to put Loctite and torque them down. So make sure you use a T40 Torx Plus, not a T40 Torx bolt to torque these down as there is a difference and you don't want to damage the bolts. I want to torque these down to 16 foot pounds. So if you're using the original style torque to yield bolt that GM made, you're going to install the new bolt and torque it down to 110 foot pounds. Then you're going to back it off one turn and then you're going to retighten it to 35 foot pounds. And then you're going to turn 140 degrees additionally after you torque it down to 35 foot pounds. But I'm reusing the old one just to hold it in place until we get our ARP bolt. And this bolt, if you use it, you use ARP lube and then you torque it down to 235 foot pounds. So next we're going to use the 12.38 inch bolts that came with the harmonic balancer to install the crank pulley. We're going to add the blue 242 Loctite and torque these down to 28 foot pounds. Next, we grab this bag that has these three Allen bolts. I'm gonna use it to install the power steering bracket. We are gonna use an eight millimeter Allen socket head to install this bracket. And there's no torque specs, so I would just say use your discretion and put it on kind of snug. Now grab the power steering pump and the other two bolts that were in that bag along with the washers. You're gonna put the washers on, slide them through the power steering pump, and then attach the power steering pump with those two bolts to the bracket. 
again, there's no torque specs to these bolts, and there's no torque specs to a lot of these bolts, but if there is, I'm going to go ahead and list them. But since there's no torque specs, I would say base it off how thick the bolt is. So you don't want to apply too much force if the bolt's kind of skinny. This is pretty medium size. So we're going to go ahead and snug them down pretty tight using a quarter inch ratchet. And you will need a 13 millimeter socket for these. Next, we're going to install the power steering and pulling. You want to make sure that this lip here is facing towards the back of the engine. Because if you put it to the front of the engine, you're going to have it sticking out here. And then your pulley will not line up to your crankshaft pulley. So you want to make sure you put it on the correct way. We're gonna use these small Allen bolts that came with the pulley and along with a four millimeter Allen socket to attach it to the power steering pump. We're gonna use a quarter inch ratchet and by now I'm assuming you know how to tighten on bolts so we're gonna fast forward past this part. So next we're gonna install the AC compressor to this bracket and if you look at the compressor, you see where the wire is at, make that face up and then face the bracket so this penis looking thing is facing towards the back of the compressor. If you put the compressor in backwards or you put the bracket in backwards, it will not line up but it'll be close to it and you might damage the compressor or scratch it up. The two bolts you'll use for this are going to be 8 millimeter by 100 millimeters long, and you're going to use a 13 millimeter socket to tighten them down. So now we are ready to start our cooling pump. We're going to use these three bolts that came with the kit along with the gaskets. And I know what you're saying, but swap, I need six bolts for the cooling pump. Well, three bolts are part of the compressor and three bolts are part of the water pump. So we're going to use a six millimeter Allen socket to install the three bolts that are eight millimeters long on the right side of the coolant pump first. Make sure you don't forget your gasket for the water pump either. You're going to want to leave these bolts a little bit loose so you can slide the water pump towards the front of the engine. That way you can make room to slide the gasket in on the left hand side. So now we're going to use the eight millimeters by a hundred millimeter long bolt to install them onto the bracket for the compressor. And then we're going to slide those bolts through the water pump and then slide the water pump a little bit forward so we can slide the gasket in between the water pump and the block. We're gonna use an eight millimeter socket to attach the 10 millimeter by 70 millimeter bolts to the bracket for the compressor to the water pump. Now we're gonna turn down the six millimeter Allen sockets that go to the water pump and we're gonna torque them down to 11 foot pounds. And then after that, the second stage is gonna be 22 foot pounds. The other two bolts on the bracket are eight millimeters. You're gonna tighten those so they're nice and snug. All right, you guys still with me? All right, so the next pulley we're gonna do is the one for the cooling pump. Holy crap, this is taking forever. And we're gonna do four bolts on this one. They're gonna be Allen size. And the socket you're gonna use for that is 3 16 inch Allen. All right, the next bracket we're gonna install is gonna be for the alternator. So check it out. They put it together for you guys with zip ties so the bolts don't fall out and those spacers don't fall out. This is how we're gonna install it into the engine and it's gonna go right in this little spot right here. Hurry up. Right there. And we're gonna put two bolts right here and right here. So just as promised, we're bolting up that bracket to the cylinder head for the alternator. And we're using an eight millimeter Allen socket. So before you fully tighten down those bolts, you're gonna install the bolt that goes through here and into the cylinder head so that way it's aligned correctly. Once you get this long bolt threaded into the cylinder head, then you can tighten up these top two bolts. Then you can pull the long lower bolt out as it's gonna go through the other alternator bracket before it gets bolted down. Watch me work these magic fingers to pull this bolt out and then we're gonna put the alternator bracket in and then slide this bolt back through there. Pay attention to this bolt and this spacer here as it's gonna go to the right side of the engine. You wanna make sure you don't screw these up. You're going to slide the bolt to the front of the bracket, then the alternator, then the spacer right behind the alternator and bolt that up to the engine cylinder head. And you want to leave it a little bit loose so you can do the left side bolt as well. Then you're going to use your 8mm Allen socket and tie up those three bolts nice and snug and we're moving on. And here it is. If your shit don't look like this, you fucked it up somewhere. So rewind the video and go watch it again. And can y'all guess where this pulley's going to go on next? You're right. The freaking alternator. So let's put it on. So that nut should be 24 millimeters. And if you need to hold the center of the shaft of the alternator, I freaking forgot to write down what size that was. I think it's an eight millimeter Allen. But anyways, uh, figure out what Allen is, hold it, and then loosen up that nut. So now I'm gonna pull out the four millimeter Allen bolts that go onto the cap that holds on the pulley. Put the pulley on the alternator, put the lock washer on, put the 24 millimeter nut. You'll wanna use a 24 millimeter thin socket because if you use an impact socket, it's gonna rub on the side of the pulley. And then I use my little 3 8 snap-on impact gun to zap it in. Now you're gonna grab that cover that goes onto the alternator pulley because you know you wanna make sure that, that shit looks pretty. And you're gonna use a four millimeter Allen to put them on. And now you're gonna watch me work my magic with my magic fingers. And don't skip past this part, guys. This is the lady's favorite part. Let's go. All right, so next we're gonna grab our eight millimeter Allen socket and we're gonna install the tensioner. Now look at this tab right here. It should go in this slot right in here. And then you have two bolts. You have one that's longer, one that's shorter. The longer one goes on the top. The shorter one goes on the bottom. And we're going to tighten these up nice and snug. The shorter bolt will go through the idler pulley cover and then through the idler pulley and then attach to the idler itself. 
And the last step, we're going to install the serpentine belt. Pay attention to how it's routed. And you're going to use the uh, 8mm Allen socket to put onto your eyelid pulley. You're going to rotate that clockwise to loosen it up and then slide it over the power, or I'm sorry, the alt. God damn it, the water pump. And welcome to the end of the video. So if you did everything correctly, your shit should look like this. And as always, if you want to help me out, you know what to do. Here's a hint. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And I'm out. And I'm back. And if you guys want to support me a different way, check out my website, buy some merch, help me out. And I'll see you guys on the next one.